lots of lovely physics in there that's what we're looking at for paper two right let's do some physics this is edxl paper two this is also useful for aqua you'd have to check and see what questions were on your paper two the diagrams x y and z show how the particles are arranged in the three states of matter x y z which one of the diagrams x y or z shows the arrangement of particles in a liquid that will be z so the particles are close but not too close and there's not that many of them they are not in neat rows so it's z which one of the diagrams x y or z shows the arrangement of particles in a gas well we know that the particles in a gas are spread out so that's x draw a ring around the correct answer in each box to complete each sentence in a gas the particles are are they vibrating in fixed positions? Nope. Moving randomly? Yep. Not moving? Nope. In a solid, the forces between the particles are stronger than the forces between the particles in a liquid? Yep. Equal to, weaker than? No. So, stronger than, that's why solids are solid and the atoms won't come apart easily. The picture shows a puddle of water in a road after a rain shower. During the day, the puddle of water dries up and disappears. This happens because the water particles move from the puddle into the air. From the puddle into the air. What process causes water particles to move from the puddle into the air? Draw a ring around the correct answer. Condensation? Nope. Evaporation, yep. Describe one change in the weather which would cause the puddle of water to dry up faster. Warmer weather. More sunshine. Something like that. This is an older paper that I'm doing and not all of the questions are relevant. It just goes to show you how often the questions are recycled each year. This question here is relevant for a 2019 physics paper 2 question. Calculate how much energy is needed to increase the temperature of 2 kilograms of water by 80 degrees C. The specific heat capacity of water is that. Use the correct equation from the physics equation sheet. So we know the mass. We know the temperature change and we know the specific heat capacity so how much energy so we're looking for energy is there an equation that links energy mass specific heat capacity and change of temperature yes there is it is the amount of heat energy well they normally call it q these days for heat energy heat energy equals mass times by specific heat capacity times by temperature change so that equals two kilograms times by four thousand two hundred joules per kilogram to make it raise its temperature by one degree c and we want to make it raise by 80 degrees c Let's get this trusty bad boy out, the old Casio, and the answer is that. 6720000, zero, zero, zero. and they've already got little G there for joules, so I don't need to bother putting that in. So that question's to do with specific heat capacity. A student used the apparatus drawn below to investigate the heating effect of an electric heater. So there's the heater, little thermometer, big metal block, power supply. Before starting the experiment, the student drew graph A. Graph A shows how the student expected the temperature of the metal block to change after the heater was switched on. Describe the pattern shown in graph A. Well, that's the time steadily going up. And the student expected the increase in temperature to also steadily go up. And it was through zero, zero. So it's two marks. 
so we see the time is directly proportional to the increase in temperature. Now we know it's directly proportional because not only does it go up steadily but it also passes through the origin so we'd get two marks for seeing that. If it did not go through zero zero you just see it was proportional, temperature was proportional at the time, not directly proportional. The student measured the room temperature, he then switched the heater on and measured the temperature of the metal block every 50 seconds. The student calculated the increase in temperature of the metal block and plotted graph B. So that's the time, that's the increase in temperature of the block, graph B, you can see it looks different to graph A. After 300 seconds, graph B shows the increase in temperature of the metal block is lower than the increase in temperature expected from graph A. Suggests one reason why. Well, you'll have lost some of the energy to the surroundings rather than going into the metal block. The power of the electric heater is 50 watts, so I'll put P there for power. Calculate the energy transferred, so I'll put E equals question mark, that's what I'm trying to find out. Calculate the energy transferred to the heater from the electricity supply in 300 seconds, so that's time. Use the correct equation from the physics equation sheet. Right, is there an equation that connects energy, power and time? Yes, there is. Energy equals power times by time. So I'll just pop those numbers in. Is the power in watts? Yes, it is, because sometimes it gives you in kilowatts, so you'd have to convert it, but we do not need to this time. And time has to be in seconds, which it already is. Sometimes they'll give it to you in minutes. The answer is 15,000 joules. 6B. The student uses the same heater to heat blocks of different metals. Each time the heater is switched on for 300 seconds. So that's the same time as before. Each block of metal has the same mass, but a different specific heat capacity. So the specific heat capacity tells you how many joules you need to make one kilogram of that substance heat up by one degree. For example, aluminium needs 900 joules to make a kilogram of it heat up by one degree. Iron only needs 450 joules to make one kilogram heat up by one degree. Which one of the metals will heat up the most? Draw a ring around the correct answer. Well, look at lead. Lead only needs 130 joules to make one kilogram of it heat up by uh, one degree so lead lead's going to heat up the most if you put the same amount of energy in them give in terms of the amount of energy needed to heat the metal blocks a reason for your answer lead only needs 130 joules of energy to heat up by one degree C. The other blocks have got higher specific heat capacities so need more energy. This part of the question is to do with paper one. So we don't need to answer that. A student used the apparatus in figure 5 to compare the energy needed to heat blocks of different materials. Each block had the same mass. Each block had holes for the thermometer and the immersion heater. 
Each block had a start and temperature of 20 degrees C. There we see 12 volt power supply going in, little thermometer, insulation around the outside, immersion heater, and there's the material being heated. The student measured the time taken to increase the temperature of each material by 5 degrees C's. State two variables the student controlled. Well, they had the, state, the same start and temperature, and they had the same increase in temperature. Figure 6 shows the student's results. It's got the time taken in seconds, and this is the material. So this is the time taken for the temperature to increase by 5 degrees. Why was a bar chart rather than a line graph used? Well, these are categoric variables. The materials are categoric variables. That means they are categories. Which material was supplied with the most energy? So, remember, the power going in is the same. It's got the same voltage and the same current. So, the one that took the longest amount of time to heat up by 5 degrees, that's going to be the one that needed the most energy. So that's concrete. Give the reason for your answer. Energy transferred equals power times by time. Power was the same for all materials. So since concrete took the most amount of time, it used the most energy. The iron block had a mass of 2 kilograms. So that's the mass. Write down what you know when you know it. It's a great exam habit. Calculate the energy transferred. Oh, so energy equals question mark. That's what we're trying to find out. Calculate the energy transferred by the heater to increase the temperature of the iron block by 5 degrees. So we know that that's our delta theta or our delta T, the change in temperature. Use the correct equation from the physics e equation sheet. And the specific heat capacity of iron is that. So that's C. Is there an equation that connects all these things? Yes. E equals mass times by specific heat capacity times by the change in the temperature. Remember, we can sometimes see E wrote as Q for heat energy these days. So the mass is 2 kilograms. Multiply that by 450 joules per kilogram per degree C. And we need it to heat by 5 degree C's. And when we multiply that, it equals 4,500 joules. In this question, you will be assessed on using good English, organising information clearly, and using specialist terms where appropriate. The information in the box is about the properties of solids and gases. It says solids have a fixed shape, are difficult to compress, which means difficult to squash, Gases will spread and fill the entire container and gases are easy to compress or to squash. Use your knowledge of kinetic theory, so that means how the particles move and how they are arranged, to explain the information given in the box. You should consider the spacing between the particles, the movement of individual particles and the forces between the particles. So if we start with solids. So solids have a fixed shape. Um, is it because the space in between the particles? Um, I guess we could talk about that. 
solids have a fixed shape because the particles are close together so they can't move comma so we've talked about the movement of the particles they simply vibrate and we'll see because the forces are strong because the forces between particles are strong. So I've actually talked about three different things just by talking about the fixed shape. Solids are difficult to compress. So solids are difficult to compress because the particles are close together so if they're already close together then they can't be squashed any closer together and let's talk about gases gases uh, will spread and fill the entire container gases will spread and fill the entire container because the spacing between the particles is large because the spacing between the particles is large movement the particles move rapid and random that's what we see and the forces between the particles is small and there we go, that should get us a lot of marks there. A can chiller is used to make a can of drink colder. Figure 6 shows a can chiller. So a can of drink goes inside. The can chiller decreases the temperature of the liquid in the can by 15 degrees C. Right, so that's our change in temperature. The mass of the liquid is 0 0.33 kilograms, right, so that's our mass. The specific heat capacity of the liquid is 4,200 joules per kilogram per degree C. So that's our specific heat capacity. Calculate the energy transferred from the liquid as it cools. So the energy transfer, that's either A or you could say Q for heat energy. Use the correct equation from the equation sheet. So that's E equals MC delta theta. So that is 0 0.33 kilograms. That's the mass times that by the specific heat capacity. And multiply that by the temperature change. And that equals 20,790. Jewels. Complete the following sentence. The specific heat capacity of a substance is the amount of energy required to change the something of one kilogram of the substance by one degree. Well, degrees are temperature. So the specific heat capacity of a substance is the amount of energy required to change the temperature. of one kilogram of the substance by one degree Celsius. 
To calculate the specific heat capacity of a material, the mass of the material needs to be measured. State the name of a measuring instrument used to measure mass. A mass top pan balance. We, we don't need to do any of this stuff because this is now on paper one. Next question. A breaking force of three kilonewtons, so that's three thousand newtons, and that's the force, is used to slow down and stop the car in a distance of 25 metres, so that's D, 25 metres. Calculate the work done by the brakes to stop the car and give the unit. Use the correct equation. So work done equals force times by distance. So the force is got to be in newtons and the distance is in meters and that equals 75,000. Give the units for work done. It's in joules. Technically you could give it as newtons meters but they like to say it in joules. And that's how to take care of business. Good luck with your paper too. Want to see more videos like this? Subscribe to my channel. GCSE Physics Explained. Thanks very much and bye for now.